chat room, so tell them okay. all a little bit and uh, look at their comments later. All right, <laughs> Anna. Okay, we're live now. Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Friday night interview for the Church of the Eternally Secure. And it's a great pleasure to have with me tonight Sister Anna, as we know her in our chat rooms. And that, that's that's the extent of my knowledge, except, of course, uh, observing all of her chats, I mean, all of her text comments. So I hope to get to know Sister Anna much better tonight. And so, uh, Anna, why don't you just say hi, and uh, and then we'll all, I'll start probing you with questions. Hey, guys. How you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm wish I could see you. I can't see you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, if, uh, yeah. in, in the chat room, if, uh, the, uh, we have any audio problems, uh, just make sure you make me aware of it in the chat room and I'll try to, to deal with it. But, uh, uh, sister Anna is not, uh, participating, uh, on screen or through the actual live broadcast. What she's doing is, uh, we're speaking on my cell phone. And I have her. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't have big gadgets like y'all do. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe maybe someday you'll you'll get caught up with all the technology. But for now, this this ought to work. We've done it this way a number of times before. Okay. So. Uh, That's a good work. All right. Okay. So let me get to know you, sister. Uh, um, first of all. Um, do you have any moniker on YouTube or something like mine is Sin City Preacher? Do you have a YouTube channel or some other name uh, that you use? Uh, no, just, just Anna. Anna. Anna is it. Okay. Uh, and now, I always have to ask this question, but I, I was taught that it's rude, uh, but to ask a woman her age, so you don't have to answer me, but if you don't mind... Uh, tell us your oh, age. I'm 49. You're 40, 49 years old. Okay. I'm 49 years old. And the funny, the funny thing about that is when I was 43 years old, I found myself aging myself. So for a long time, um, I was telling everybody I which I was 43 at the time or something like that. But the long time I was telling them I was 43 years old. They said, Aaron. You're not 44 years old. I said, I'm not. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, you're uh, 49. And that makes you a, just a, you're a young puppy compared to me. So uh, uh, I'm 68. Oh, we're all young at heart, Luke. You're, you've got the most young spirits. I, I, you have a young spirit. Well, all right. Well, thank you very much. But <laughs> I... Uh, as I've noticed, uh, especially the last few years, uh, everybody I meet seems like a young person to me now. <laughs> you know what, me too. You did. The first time I felt old was about nine years ago. I was in Florida. And the little, I guess they were about 20, 21. And they said, hey, old heads, what y'all doing over that? I said, are they calling us old heads? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, okay. As I'm as I'm listening to you uh, speak, uh, it brings me to my uh, second question, and and that is, uh, can you tell us where you live, and not but not your address and zip code, just just generally where you where do you live? Yeah, I have a whole bunch. I have a whole bunch of people. I pull up the mobile trailer. <laughs> uh, I am. Um, actually, I am a friend, I have a friend and sister, and, um, we are from New Jersey, I'm originally from New Jersey, but my parents and my whole family is, like, from South Philly and Jersey. Um, I left there a long time ago and pretty much traveled from the East Coast to the West Coast. Um, with nothing but a backpack on my back and pretty much settled up everywhere. I was a, I was a nomad. I was a gypsy. Uh -huh. And so where, where, where are you living now? What state or city? I am in Arkansas. Arkansas, okay. The home of Hillary Clinton. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to ask uh, uh, the chat room, uh, Celine's here. Uh, 
Celine, uh, give me a little comment to tell me if the audio is okay. Can you hear and understand Sister Anna? Please, please let me know, Celine. Okay. Celine, I yeah. love her. Yeah. She is sweet and lovable, isn't she? Um, I'm not robotting. What's that? I'm not robotting, am I? Uh, no. Okay. She says we're good, so she can hear you. Okay. So let's continue here. Uh, so you live in Ar Arkansas, but you were you basically you were born and raised and grew up in uh, New Jersey area. But how long have you lived in Arkansas now? Oh, off and on for twenty-four, twenty-five years. Yeah. Okay. So quite quite a while. So you feel pretty comfortable there uh, if you've been there that long. Um, okay. We're going to go back in time. When uh, Sister Anna was uh, 49 years ago, when you were brought into this world, and I'd like to know a little bit about how you grew up and, and your family and so on. But so let me let me ask you: uh, uh, Did you grow up in a two-parent family? And do you, how, uh, your parents are, are they still alive now? No, um, I grew up. Let's see. I have an older brother and a twin sister. And the funny thing about, um, I'm Italian, plus I have a lot of different other mistresses from my mother's side, but we were very, uh, all our families kind of moved together in the same neighborhood. We all lived around each other. And um, I came from a very loving, but she the Italian family. We were Roman Catholic, and it was awful. <laughs> okay, but your parents, uh, you had both of your parents when you grew up then? My, yeah, my mother was very, very loving. She was by the era. My father, um, he, had, he had some mental issues with the brain. And unfortunately, I inherited it. Yeah, you know, a little manic depression, uh, serotonin problems, and all that good stuff that comes with it. But I came from a very loving family, a very loud family, mm -hmm. and um, okay. basically, that's it. All right, that's good. I I just wanted to know. Unfortunately. At this time in American history, it's it's very common that people grow up without both parents around. There's divorces and single single um, single uh, mothers. Uh, so you had both your parents, uh, and you said you had how many siblings? I have a twin sister, and I have a brother who is fifty four. Uh huh. Is it a regular twin or or identical twin? She's my fraternal twin. She is what I call, she's like my angel twin. She never got in any trouble. And I told her, I said, you got, you never got in any trouble. I said, you stuck the air out of my uh, lungs. <laughs> I said, you sure? You came out and I came out the bad one. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, uh... so we laugh about that, you know. And did you say you have another sibling too, or a brother or another second uh, sister? I I have an older brother. He is uh, 54, he works for UPS, and he still lives in the same neighborhood that we all grew up in. It's, back at New, it's funny, in, it's funny. Back, back around New Jersey area, huh? Yeah, South Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, about, well, my mother, the funny thing is, my mother worked worked for um, Donald Trump in the Trump Casino, and she worked for him for years. And my mother, um, she died in '69 in a car accident in '05, and uh, you know it was, um, she was on her way down to Atlantic City. Her and my aunt. And, uh, and I, I told her, I, said, I remember saying to my mother, I said, you know, Ma, I said, why don't you just stay home? I said, I, you know, it's not a good idea to be traveling to Atlantic City and 
it's just bad. There's too many people on the road. No, 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 we'll be fine. And so she had asked me if I wanted to come, and I didn't. And about 7 o'clock that night, um, an officer left a, a note on my door, and I, I looked at it. I called the police station, and they had told me my mom was uh, hit head mm -hmm. on. What happened on what happened was there was five teenage a group of five teenagers in BMWs and real sport real fast sports cars and they were traveling on the opposite side of the highway playing bumper tag. Now my mother's name is Margaret. The seventeen year old that shit my mother, her name was Margaret. Plus, there were two, like there was a 16 year old and a 15 year old in their car. Well, what this game is, and I hope no one ever plays it, is you do speeds from about 80 to 120 miles an hour, and you touch the bumper and you go to the front of the line. Well, she had missed that bumper and her air, her car went mid air. I want to say about thirty feet head on into my mom's, mm. and uh, that was devastation. Mm -hmm. That was uh, the most devastation. So, uh, uh, how old? Uh, how old were you when that happened? I was thirty six. Th thirty six. So that was twenty. I mean, uh, 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 thirteen. I know, right? 13, uh, 13 years I think too. 13 years ago. <laughs> I can do simple math still. That's about it. But uh, uh, okay. Um, so uh, you're both your parents were, it, and, and your uh, your twin sister and your older brother were in the family. Uh, now you talked about your father's uh, issue, but uh, did was there any? form of Christianity or, or a, a religious upbringing from your parents? Did they have any kind of faith? Um, my father, no. My father was, uh, no, no. Um, my mother went to church every Sunday. Of course, she dressed us up and um, I went to CCD, so I had when we graduated at CCB, I had to wear the little wedding dress, which was way too bizarre for me. And um, she got us into that Catholic, and and I went to CCB, and I couldn't stand the nuns. They used to hit me, and I said, this is freaking me out. And I, I think around 12 years old, I left the religion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my family was just, you know, well, you're going to go to hell, you're going to go to hell, and, and that's what they were taught, you know? So they, uh, did your parents actually give you any religious instruction other than that, could that claim you're going to go oh, to hell? No, because our Bible that we had, it shot, it, it just shot on the shelf. I've never seen it open, you know what I mean? No, I do remember praying as a child. I do remember seeing my knees as a child praying. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of problems as I was a child. I had a lot of learning disabilities, which led me into the drug war world at, at 10 years old. But, um, but yes, I mean, I my mom did say, you know, we had to say to our father, the Hail Mary, uh, mm -hmm. blah, 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 yeah. all that stuff. So <laughs> your, your, um, your, your mother, it was, sounds like my family. Um, my mother didn't really practice Roman Catholicism, but she made sure the kids went to, to catechism and to church and stuff. And it, about, she didn't ever teach us anything about religion or anything no yeah no it was very hush hush and, and your your, your father not, did he did your father ever express any religious uh, belief system to you no see my mother and father were very hush hush about everything and 
Uh, it, you know, my being my mother was Italian, so we had um, the goombas. You know, we were connected to the goombas. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So there's a lot of, of hush hush in our family, yeah. and um, I never really knew it and, and what was going on. It was over my head. Now, was your uh, was your people. was the Italian part of your family? Did that come from your father or both of your parents? Well, now my father, he his parents came from Sicily, so my father was all Italian. My mom had uh, half Italian, Irish, Indian, and Danish in her. Mm -hmm. yeah. My great grandfather served under um, uh, General Custer. Mm -hmm. It sounds my like my, my great grandfather was part of Hatch. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it seems to me, um, based on my wife, the way she grew up, and many other people I've talked to, that for some reason back east, Italian families and um, Irish families did a lot of intermarrying with each other. So you're, you have part Italian and part Irish and, and other things in, in your uh, genealogies. Um, but it was a typical Catholic situation where they wanted you to go to church and the catechism and stuff and learn about it, but they didn't really have a, either have faith or enough understanding to, to actually teach you themselves. Yeah, they didn't know. They did the best. Look, I, years I, I resented a lot of things, but as I, as I am now at 49, I understand that they did the very best what they could do at that time. Because we were, you know, in a depression and, and you know, Reggie was about to hit the button. <laughs> I mean, nobody really knew what was going on. And um, so we were just making it day by day. Mm -hmm. But we never really talked about Christ. And, and I, I felt, I just, uh, I, it took, for me, um, as a little girl, my, my brother incorporated the rock and roll into my life. And my uncle at the time was living in our house. Now, nobody ever knew this, but I would spend, you know, time in his room. He never did anything to me, but we were listening to Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath. And I noticed, and, and it's something, it's just so powerful because this is how the drugs enter your life, for me anyway. I was watching him snort lines of cocaine, and I thought to my inner conscience, what is this? So five years later, at 10 years old, here I am sniffing the very thing he was sniffing. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a rough, rough start uh, that young with the drugs. Uh, uh, but, um, okay, you're... Um, and I guess your your brother and your sister, uh, they had the same kind of experience growing up without any religious instruction. And your now, what did you? How was school for you as as a young young girl? Did you enjoy school, and did you take it seriously? No, no because I, I had a learning disorder. You know, I had a I was a slow. I had a learning disorder, so it was very frustrating for me to learn and uh, to be teased and bullied. So by the time I was 10 years old, I had had enough of it. And the only thing that really fascinated me was history. I love history, mm -hmm. you know? And then, um, so by the time I was 10, I learned to top it up. And then when I, started doing drugs, I just went to another place and said, this is the best, mm -hmm. greatest thing, and the worst that ever happened to me. Yeah. Well, I've, um, uh, you know, I've had uh, many years uh, of using drugs in my youth, and uh, 
uh, many people, I all my friends and did the same kind of a thing. And many of them are either in prison right now or they're dead because of because of that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know of anybody that ever um, got started as young as 10 years old the way you did. That's uh, that's a tough way to get started off when you're just a young girl. Yeah. Yeah. My parents, my parents found out when I was 12 when the school called them and said, uh, you're so you know, you has got LSD, Quaaludes, Valium. They were, their mouths had the floor, like, what are you talking about? My kids don't do drugs. It's just 12 years old. So by the time I was 12, I was in my first rehab. And from there on in, there was nothing that they could do that could stop me. I well, had. How did you get uh, how did you get uh, access to those drugs? Was it still your older brother that was uh, introducing you to all that or did you have friends also at that age that were involved in all that? My older brother um, he stayed away from us, but we always like when he was away from his friends, we would find his friends, and it was freely given to us. Freely given to us. When you say us, is who, who else was there with you taking it? Um. Oh, me and everybody I grew up with in my neighborhood. Um. My son was poor, poor. My poor sister. How much trouble I used to get her into. Just uh, everybody I grew up with. Wow. And half of them are dead now. And it's it's thank thank you, Jesus, because I should be I should have been dead a thousand times ago. Yeah. Huh. Um uh, yeah. so how did that so you um you said at twelve years old they discovered at school that you were had drugs and what, what happened? Yeah. What kind of what consequences came with that? Oh, uh they put me in a rehab in Center City, um, and I was there for about a month. And I mean, I just I didn't care. I didn't care about getting better. Nothing. I got I got a good taste of that life, and there was nothing stopping me. And back then, it was you know the hair bands and the punk rock and i got involved in all that scene and there was and, and the cops there was the, the funny thing is my mother and father was to call the cops 50 million times please help my baby and the cops were like well just nothing we can do there's nothing we can do but did you uh get so, su did you get suspended from school or anything like that Oh, yeah, yeah. I tried to steal a school bus, which she went down. <laughs> we, had, we had this game. We had this uh, soccer game against Kate May. So they came, and, you know, we were, we were the bruisers uh, sitting on the side watching the soccer game. Well, my friend, Minnie, the game was over. All the kids got on their bus. And many, my friend Minnie says, well, Ann, go ahead, go sleep on that bus. I dare you. I said, don't you dare me. So I got on the bus and I shut the door and I, I started off the bus. And so, so they just, they wedged the door open. Of course, I wasn't going to get far because it was a big bus. How, <laughs> how, how old were you when you went with the bus? I was 15. 15. So 15, at, at, yeah. at, at five years old, you observe cocaine being used by your brother. At 10 years yeah. old, you start taking cocaine. At 12, 12 years old, you're busted in school for all these drugs. And at 15, you're stealing a school bus. Yeah, I'm strung out. I was strung out by the time I was 12. Wow. That's pretty, yeah, that's, 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 that is very, very amazing. So well, let me ask you then, um, you said LSD and other things. Well, can you give us an inventory, if you can, of the, the types of drugs that you were taking at that time? What kind of drugs? Uh, just, 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 just an inventory of all of the various types of drugs that you did at such a young age. Oh, my goodness. Uh, 
Um, and this year we came along, um, heroin, lose, uh, Valium, Valium was my drug of choice, meth, hope, um, crack, everything, everything yeah. you name it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was free. And like I said, we were at the time, you know, we were beautiful girls. So, you know, when you're a girl, you really don't need that money. They give it to you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, in, the, in, in South Philly, I mean, that's just the way it was back yeah. then. Being a girl, you really didn't need no, you didn't, you didn't need no money. Yeah. Right, yeah, which were given to you. Mm-hmm. It was pretty bad. Yeah, the boys. I'm sure the boys would try to use drugs to get you high, to trying to take advantage of you. I imagine the. Um, a, a lot of bad stuff happened. Yeah. A lot of bad stuff. You yeah. know, I watched a good friend. Uh, I watched a good friend blow his head off about a foot away from me. Wow! And what? And, what? Yeah. Uh, what? At what age did that happen? I was 21. 21. Yeah, I was, I was uh, with my friends, who, uh, me and my boyfriend, a um, couple other bikers, and we were sitting playing cards. And my friend, who was sitting in front of me, there was a loaded gun on the table. We always kept, you know, we always kept everything loaded. And she, out of the blue, he picked it up and shot himself in the head. And I, uh, and uh, that suppressed deeply. That really, really, <laughs> oh my goodness. But uh, yeah, those yeah. were more ways. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I have mentioned that as I did uh, tonight talking to you, that um, many of my friends uh, didn't survive. And, and some of them are in prison even today. Uh, and, I, and I was there uh, and sh- doing the same things, but fortunately never got caught and, and survived it all. But, um, and, and now you've got the, uh, an, another story on those lines, but I think based on the age that you started all these things, uh, it's not an exaggeration that it is, it is a miracle that you even survived uh, that all those things uh, in your youth, it's yeah, it's beyond. It sure is a miracle. I was uh, I was very tough. I was a city girl. I had to learn to be tough, and I had to learn to take a punch. Mm. And I took many of them. And um, I, you know, uh, I'd be beaten, and I it just it, I was it it, it came. It was a, it came familiar to me. I was used to that. Well, let me ask so you. I, felt, I, yeah. wanted, I wanted to ask you about uh, before we uh, go. I'm trying to go chronologically to see see your, how your life played out each year. But you you uh, stole this bus at 15, and uh, uh, you you were already in trouble at school for for, for drugs before that at age 12. Uh, so now what happens? Are you still in school or did you ever get expelled and kicked out of school with all that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got kicked out of freshman. I got kicked out of freshman in high school and they sent me to an alternative school. And I was, I quit school by the time I was 11. And I was on my own. Um, which led me to... Go go dancing, bartending, and all the horrible things that goes with that lifestyle. So, what happened uh, uh, with you living at home with your parents during all that? Did uh, did you leave home at a young age, or did they tell you to leave? I laughed. I laughed. I laughed. What, I laughed what age was that? How, how, uh-huh. how old were you when you left home? Oh my goodness! Um, I'll just say. You know, I was, I left him at 16, and then I would come home for two two weeks just to get some rest, and then I was born again. So really, I was all over, but by the time I was 17, I was living with my friend Manasseh, and uh, but at the time, 
the men that we were going out with were um, metalheads, so they were like 10 years older than us, and they had no clue that we were only 17, you know? Mm -hmm. These are like 34, 35, 40 year old men. And we got, that's how um, I experienced the occult, the, the dark side of the world. Mm -hmm. the, the, the dark side you don't want to go to. I've seen and seen some crazy things. Okay, so let, let's. Okay, you're uh, you're away. You're you've moved out. Uh, you're living on your own at a young age. You get involved with these uh, metalheads, and now, uh, when you say that some f type of Satanism um, was introduced to you, how did that how did that come about? Um, it was just metalheads, bikers. I I didn't have one group of people that I stayed with. When I got into um, speed metal, and I think I think my brother was the first one that turned me on to Black Sabbath, and I was watching The Exorcist when I was seven years old. So, so coming from that, when you're listening, for me, I'm not going to speak for anybody else, but for me, and looking back now, when when you're listening to um, Slayer, Metallica, any uh, Death, Dark Angel, Death Angel, any of those bands, they're performing um, rituals on the audience, and the audience don't even know it. So by that time, it had I wasn't safe. So those spirits were latching on to me, you know, I had the spirit of anger, I had the spirit of, of, oh, hate, and my, and my mother used to say to me, she said, Susanna, sometimes your eyes get so black, and I understand her now. Yeah. So how did you uh, respond to all this stuff? Did you embrace it, uh, and, and actually, and, and like, like this, uh, uh, all this uh, evil Satanistic uh, things coming at you, or, or did were you aware that hey, there's some something wrong with this, and, or, or not? At, fir at first, it's such an adrenaline high, and that's how that's how cutting Satan is. At first, it's such a high, like yeah, this is great, you feel invincible, but. Ten years later, there's 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 a price to be paid, you know, and it's not a pretty one. And um, uh, all I, I I can I all I can say is if there is anybody listening to this right now, uh, please. Get out of the occult. Get far away from people that are into it. Even Wicca, all of it is satanic. Every single bit of it. Because it took a long time. I mean, I could walk into a bar, Brother Luke. This was like 15 years ago. And another girl came up to me and she said, you're one of us. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, you're one of us. She goes, you're a witch. And I'm like, and I'm, both, I'm thinking to myself, how does she know that? And so, um, by that time, you know, by living on the streets, sleeping under bridges, eating whatever you can, um, I lost my kids. I... I lost everything. I lost my my dignity. Um, I lost everything. Well, uh, somehow we missed uh, you having children here. Uh, what age did and, and how did that come about to, for you to have children? Okay, I'll go back about um, 
I go back about from the time I was 23. I met, I went to a great for Dead show, and uh, I met this little heavy, and he was, he was from Arkansas, where I am now. And um, we went on a road. We went from the East Coast to the West Coast following the Grateful Dead around. And when I and then I stayed in California for about, I want to say close to a year, and my mother had called me, and she had said, um, your sister's getting married, do you need to come home? So I did, and I stayed, I guess maybe four months, and my friend had told me, listen, why don't you come back to Arkansas and you can stay with me? And so I ended up back, I ended up here. Well, um, we broke up and I met my husband and then got married and well, what kind of a person was your husband when, when you met him? Was he into the same kind of scene as you at that time? No, no. My father, my husband called my father. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 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 What's the matter with me? I'll tell you. <laughs> my father, oh, my goodness. Anyway, he was um, seven years older than me. And I had just gotten out of a really bad abusive relationship. So he took me in and we started dating and I got pregnant with Araya. And um, his thing was he was an alcoholic. He, he was an alcoholic. His father was an alcoholic. He died of alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And he was an only child. And so for the first Four years, it was a battle, but I love. I mean, I, I went to AA. I tried everything to get clean, and you mean I for yourself, or your, for yourself, or your husband at that time? Were you trying to get clean of off the alcohol? For me, I couldn't do it anymore because I had done it for so long. I, you know, and I, I had seen so much horrific stuff. And your, but so your, hu your husband at that time was also an alcoholic then. Yeah, and, yeah. and, I, and I was still in the A meeting and he said, please, I said, please come with me. I said, support me. I said, I, you know, I don't even know how to take care of myself, but I've got babies I've got to care for. Did, so, uh, did you please? Did your husband I, uh, did your husband ever have any interest in, in AA or, or getting off of alcohol? My my husband was Lutheran. Um, my husband years later to this day, I, I have to say he stood up, he took care of my kids. Because there's no way I could have lived. I had to do the best thing. The best thing for me, he had, so my family was all up north, and he had family down here. Mm -hmm. And there was no way I could fight him for custody. Mm -hmm. And I had no right to fight him for custody. My girls, I had to the smartest thing was to let him have custody so I could get my life back together again. Yeah, and how old were, and how old were the girls at that time? I'm sorry? Uh, how, old were, that? how old were your girls at that time? Araya was five and Gia was three. Mm -hmm. And I supported them, uh, child support. I made sure you know, I was always coming to see them, but my, my husband, he was one of those um, control, very controlling, like, he, there were times when he, he wouldn't even let me talk to them on the phone, I mean, and my, and my, my kids know this to this day, you know, but um, I feel bad for them because they were, Rob, of 
what kind of band, you know? Mm-hmm. And and I I think for forty years of my life I had a broke I had a broken heart that needed to be healed. Mm-hmm. And I was working this is how I got saved. I was twenty seven, I was pregnant with Araya and I was working at a pizza hut. Now there's this man that came in and at least about my age and he had a wooden cross around his neck and I said, Not to be funny. Not to be funny, I'm not picking you up for nothing. I said, But there's something about you and and there's just something really sure about you. He said, Well how about you come to church with me at the church? So he says, it's not like that. We, it's, a, it's a building. Just come, I'll, I'll pick you up for Sunday and just see how you like it. So I said, okay. All right. I'll, I'll, all right, I'll do that. So um, I felt, I, I automatically felt uh, comforted because pastor was a recovering drug addict. So that automatically was like, thanks to Jesus. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's funny because the guy that took me, his name was John. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, John. And he wanted to pause. And I thought of John the Baptist. So what happened to your friend that invited you to church? Did you remain friends very long? Or? No, no. Um, I had, uh, at this at that time, I had uh, taken off again. And um, my husband had full custody. And um, I pretty much left the state because it was too heartbreaking to live in in the same area and he was play, playing his games not to see my children. Um, so I had to, I had to, uh, by this time, uh, I'll fast forward a little bit. I had uh, two severe car accidents with, with split my head wide open and, and uh, and uh, a couple of overdoses, I sh- I, I'm surprised I'm even talking, honestly. And uh, so I said, I, I, my ex-boyfriend at the time said, listen, man, he, he served all well four, he said, listen, man, he said, why don't you go home to the hearth, home to the hearth, your mom, go home, go home to the hearth. So I did in 04. And I was blessed to stay with her for two years because in 05, she would no longer be with us, be with me. You know, and my father had died in 09 of brain cancer. And uh, it's just a lot of tragedy, you know? Okay, uh, now you. You were, uh, you said you were, uh, I can't remember if it was 23 or 27 when you met that man that took you to church. And I was, yes, I saw him. I saw him 
and, his and, name was John. I'll never forget his name. And, and so then you you go to the church, but and then you said you went to a number of other churches. And you, did you say something about Buddhism? I know I got involved. You know I was I that was before I got saved. I got involved with Buddhism before I got saved. You know I was like you know all about the oneness and. Oh my goodness, I had statues, I had Buddhist statues, and just, oh, I was a nomad, you yeah. know, I, I, I was just... It seems that, to me that uh, uh, you've reached a point where you uh, you're a seeker and you're you're looking for answers about uh, God and life and purpose and all those things now, and so you're, you're exploring everything, trying to find answers. Um, when did you uh, come across a, a church or a teacher or something that actually told you the actual gospel? Oh, my goodness. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, uh, when I, I can, okay. When I was on the street, this is after I got saved, I ended up in Tennessee, and I was living in the Appalachian Mountains, I was camping out there, and I knew Jesus because I talked to him all the time on the street. He's the one that, when I, I mean, when I was uh, sleeping in the rain, he kept me safe. When I had a cold, he, you know what I mean? So I was all, I was always talking to him, but I just didn't know the Bible. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember uh, I had to walk 50 miles to get to town, and I had a 50-pack backpack on my back. And I remember I said, Lord, I said, I just don't know if I can walk anymore. And there was this, there was this uh, car wash, and this lady, I, I was emptying out my backpack, I had my clothes at the time, and on the car license plate, it said, uh, Jesus. I said, oh, Lord, um, oh, thank you, okay, Lord. So I went up to her, and I said, maybe some, maybe some women can use some clothes, these are clean. I just washed them. They're, you know, not funky or anything. Maybe somebody could use these. She, she said, thank you. So I walked about another 20 miles, and um, I said, Lord, I really don't think I can walk anymore. And this man pulled over, and he gave me and my friend a ride. He said, I can I, I, I give a ride for 20 more miles. So we got out of the car, he didn't really say anything, but he gave us a Bible track. And I said, I said, wow. I said, okay, Lord, thank you for being with me. And so he, he, he always showed me, um, he always showed me in things that I could relate to since I wasn't book smart, you see what I'm saying? So... I got the, um, let's see, when I got married in 2013, I got the gospel message, and I fell in love. I said, I dove down deep, I should have took the milk, but I went through the, I went for the meat first, which if there's any baby Christian listening to this right now, drink the milk, John, 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 John. But I, my uh, father-in-law, he says, Anna, study John, Colossians, Ephesians, Romans, Corinthians. Stay in them chapters until you are solid, until you're solid in your faith. Stay in them chapters. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to hear you uh, advise everybody. That's the, that's the same uh, advice that I would give someone as far as beginning their Bible studies. Uh, I, I find it really wonderful that uh, it seems to me God sent you the man with the wooden cross. He took you to church. 
then God put this this person in front of you that had Jesus on their license plate, and and then they you, uh, a driver picked you up and gave you a ride uh, that was like a hitchhiker picking up a, picking up a hitchhiker and gave you a, a gospel tract. And so it seems to me that God knew you were seeking, and He kept sending you people to uh, get you the truth. I was seeking. I was. I was. I was. I think out of all my friends back then, I was desperately seeking because, like I said, the the, the, um, the occult. I I never murdered anybody. I just did the like you know. Magic is magic, period. It's out of the devil. But um, I've never, you know, seen any killings in front of me. You know what I'm saying? It was always, it, we, we call it, uh, uh, we just, yeah, I just didn't see the, the, um, the killings of, of it. But we did have those, and it came, you know, it's, the, the spirits, the demons are very familiar. Very familiar, and I try to stay away from anything that's going to mm -hmm. um, haunt me. <laughs> but, um, um, what was where was I going? Um, yeah. Oh, so you were talking about, yeah, the guy giving me a trap. What was funny about that was when he chopped us off, it had to be about 115 degrees out with backpack on. And we walked by, I said, we walked, we walked out another five miles. And um, I felt God, I said, I said, I just don't think I can do this anymore. I really cannot walk anymore. And my friend said, I you're never going to believe it. I said, what now? He said, look over to the right. And I said, because we were in front of like, like a consignment shop. And what was in the yard, and I tell no lie, there must have been about 10 statues of Jesus. <laughs> I said, you got to be kidding me. I said, Lord, you're funny. I said, I love you so much. I said, wow. I said, wow, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And um, so, yeah, that's how he worked. That's how he worked with me because, because I, was, I was different, you know. I was different. I, 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 um, no, I'm no. what you call dumb. <laughs> no, you're not. But street you're smart. I, I am street smart, but I'm dumb. Uh -oh. No, you're uh, being too hard on yourself now. But the, uh, you're, uh, you have all these uh, efforts by God to uh, get you the truth and to, to, to know him. And, and you did the tract give you the real gospel or did you have to go to the Bible to get it all cleared up so you understood the real gospel? And did you start reading the Bible right after, shortly after the uh, you were given the tract? I did. I, I you know, I, I, car I even carried it. I had, I had an um, old Bible with me and I used to sleep with it underneath a pillow everywhere I went. But I was still confused. I still was confused because nobody really explained it to me. But um, it's just been within the last seven years that I've really plugged in. And I can't get enough of hearing the word. I love, I just, I just love hear. I love hearing about Jesus. I love hearing um gospel songs and gospel hymns i just i just i am in all of him because of what he did for me he loved me so much he thought i was so precious and such a jewel in his eyes that he saved my life more than i more than i can even count i i, I just I just give it all to him. Let me I give uh, it all to him. 
Can I uh, can I back up and ask you uh, more about uh, your daughters? Uh, your your uh, you, your husband got the custody, and then the years passed. That when they were three years old and five years old, uh, were you able to uh, be involved at uh, all in, as they grew up, or and and how? What is your relationship with the children now? I was in and out of their lives. Um, I, I was very very close with them. You know, but and I was all I always made sure I was, you know, and I was talking to them no matter what state I was in. But the funny thing is, when I when my oldest daughter, Araya and Gia, they said, Well, mom, why don't you come back to Arkansas? Because at the time I was, I was with an abusive man, he wanted to kill me, and uh, and um. I said, okay, I'll come back. And so I did. And um, here I am. But see, my, at the time when I came back, my kids had just hit teenage years. So my, in Arkansas, if you could be 14 years old, and if you have a wristband, you're allowed into a bar as long as you have a wristband, which I, and I was furious about it. I was so furious when I found out my ex-husband was letting my kids go to a bar with older people that are drinking, you know what I mean? Even if it's, regardless if it's even watching a band. Why, why do you have them in a bar at 14 years old? But by that time, they did not want to listen to me because who am I? Who am I to come in and slap the rules on them? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And what's sad now, now I have to say, they, they are taking care of themselves, but my older daughter, which... You know, I'm praying against, and I haven't, I just, she's in, she's been uh, dabbling into the occult for seven years now. She's very dark, and I, it's it, it's like she's got the, she's in the gothic, wears upside down cross, and it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Yeah. Now, my other daughter, I do know she's saved. She's just kind of figuring out her lifestyle. She went to Colorado, and she's just trying to get it together. Hmm. But, I, I'm, you know, right now, um, we do keep in touch with texting, but until... I want them to feel comfortable, and they have to live their lives, and they have to heal, and when they're ready to come back, my door is wide open for them, because my greatest wish is for them to know the Lord and how much the Lord loves them, you know? Mm -hmm. That's my greatest wish, is just for them to to, to love the Lord, to feel the, the, the just, just know Jesus, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so how, how are you doing now as far as uh, uh, all the aspects of your life? You still you have any problems with anything or you, you got everything running the way you'd like to as far as? You know, um, you know. As far as, you know, I am at peace. I am at peace. I finally have the peace that surpasses all understanding. But my body's like a like an eighty year old, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I you know from, from yeah it was, it was uh, yeah. Do you have somebody? Are you are you living with somebody, or do you have any family or, or someone that there that uh, you so you're not alone and. Uh, I have the best husband in the world. I'm blessed. Oh, so you didn't I'm tell me about you. this is a this is a second husband then, not not the not the father of yeah, your daughter. 
Yeah, I remember um, I was leaving Florida and um, my ex, he was involved with the South, South Philly um, uh, mob and uh, he used to be silly and he said, he said, I'll shoot you and throw you in a river and we'll never find you again. And I called him and said, I'm out of here. So I took the, I, I, I hopped on the bus and I went to Arkansas. Well, I met my husband and um, I met his mom and his mom was Italian and she was from California. And her, his dad and him were both Navy men. His father was, uh, uh, he worked in with the Reagan days. So he was uh, a spy on the sub for, in them days. And when Reagan was ready to hit the button. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so yeah, I, God bless me with a beautiful family, and God rest my mother-in-law's heart. She is no longer with us, but uh, I have a wonderful husband who loves me and cherishes me, and he is nine years younger than me. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, what are you going to do when I'm 65? Are you going to like... Buy me the pens and roll me around <laughs> or what? <laughs> you know, my you know what my wife tells me all the time. She 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 has her, says her favorite term is the home. She's threatening to put me in a home. <laughs> she says, I said. I said, well, you know, I, I've had brain surgery and three back surgeries, and now I had open heart surgery, and I really appreciate you being helping me get through all, all this stuff. And and she says, the home, the next next problem is just going to put me in a home. <laughs> That's so funny. That reminds me of, uh, remember the three grumpy old men? Remember yeah. that movie? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that's too funny. I I remember oh, I, when I was when I was in the hospital recovering from the heart surgery, and um, it was uh, October of uh, seven uh, seventeen. Um, I I was talking to my son, and he's single, but he's serious about uh, his girlfriend. And uh, I said to my son, his name is Mark. I said, Mark, I'm. You know, I'm having this heart surgery, and I don't think there's going to be a problem. I'm not expecting any problem, but you know, I, I could die. There's a possibility, and uh, and uh, I don't I, I don't want uh, I, my my great worry is that I don't want you to be alone because you don't have any siblings, and uh, you know, once I'm gone and my wife Cindy's my wife, once we're gone, you're alone, and and I I. I I know how important it is as you get old, and you 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 really need um, uh, someone there to to help each other as you grow as you're growing old together. You know, helping each other is an important thing. To me, the saddest thing is for someone to grow old and need help, and there's nobody there because they're all alone. And and so he assured yeah. me that he assured me that he and his girlfriend are getting married, and they're gonna they want to have children and stuff. I said, because you got to have a, a wife, and you got to have some children. Someday you'll be old, and you don't want to be alone. So um, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad yeah, you that. Gotta uh, have a foundation. What? You, you gotta have that foundation. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's why I asked. I, I wanted to see, uh, you know, how you're doing now. I'm happy that you're uh, you have a husband that and a wonderful marriage at this point at this point in your life everything you've been through has been very very difficult especially i don't remember anybody i know having uh these issues at such a young age as as uh, it began with you so i'm glad now that you've got happiness and a, a wonderful husband uh it, you know um the drugs have definitely damaged a lot of my memory and um uh you know, but God is slowly healing me. And my husband, he is, he's so wonderful. He really is. Mm -hmm. He's just, he 
he sees beyond, um, he sees, be, he sees the heart, mm-hmm. where a lot of men see the, the, the flesh. Mm-hmm. The flesh ages, you know? The skin ages one day. What are you going to do? Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah, we can't avoid that. But thank you, Jesus. We're going to get a beautiful, glorified body, and uh, we'll never get old again. So, very thankful. Amen. Yeah. Amen. How about that? You know, <laughs> I mean, Jesus is just amazing, <laughs> and the gospel of grace is. It, I mean, to hear to hear how you all put it, and and, and how many people are 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 coming out of that uh, lordship being a Catholic and all that brainwashing stuff. Mm-hmm. Our Jesus, our mm-hmm. Lord Christ, our, our Almighty, he is, he never would make anything so hard for us. Mm-hmm. He wants, he, you know, it's so easy, believe on me, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And thou shall be saved. Amen. Not, you know, when I hear when I hear people say, "Well, you got to repent. You got to re- come on down, come on down to the repentance and part of the church. Mm-hmm. Get right with God. That's mm-hmm. why it's here. Get right with God." Well, wait a minute. And, and I always felt I always felt odd about that. I'm like, you know. Get right with God. Well, God is inside me, yeah. and He is the one that is cleaning me up. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, you got that and, right. Um, yeah, yeah. So let what I've done. Let, let, let me ask you. Um, you know, I, I've I've been uh, observing your your comments in in the chat room now for quite a while. It's, uh, it's been. I don't know a month or two or more. All I, I, my chats are crazy, aren't they? Yeah. How how did you uh, how did you uh, come across the Church of the Eternally Secure and and get to know uh, me and and this congregation? From Renee. Ah, <laughs> it's the same old story from Renee. <laughs> yes. You know when I saw Renee. I I said no. I said I I I automatically. She was like I just felt at one with her. You know what I mean? Because I have come from Hollywood, and I just felt connected. You know, she's no nonsense. She say it like she says it like she is, and I mm-hmm. love that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. just love that about her. So I that I, I was so connected. And then when I came across your channel, I was like, oh, Luke, oh, Luke. <laughs> you know, like it, it just ancient and and Matthias and Daniel and they're so and 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 the people about my brothers and sisters in the chat group. It became like one big family for me, and I've I've fallen in love with all of you. You know, I I just I just really have. I I've learned so much, and, and everybody's sharing their stories and um, praying for each other, and look and and that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. You know? Well, that's that's our, our, our great hope is that uh, uh, your experience uh, is repeated over and over again that when people, uh, when they discover uh, this congregation, that they give it a try and, and, and if they're blessed that they'll want to re- be a regular participant and, uh, and so you have and uh, I, I, I speak for not only myself, but a lot of people, they're very, very happy to have you in the congregation. I'm so happy to be a part of the family. You know, I mean, what a blessing. And I thank God, I thank Jesus for it. You mm-hmm. know, I thank him every day because um, it's just so much love there. And, and, and what I like about it is, yeah, you have your trolls. 
But Alex and uh, Hendrix, ooh, they're on top of them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they're on top of them, trolls. I'm like, okay, I, my, my tiny little eyes can't see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you hear that? Uh, Alex and Hendrix, do you hear her? She's uh, thanking you for uh, uh, helping the chat room to, uh, to function properly and, and uh, not allow the, the trolls to to interfere with our our fellowship and and uh, disrupt what we're doing. So yeah, Alex and Hendrix and all the others that are um, and the girls, yeah, they're really good and and it's funny because they I don't know how they do it, but what did they type a thousand a thousand miles a minute? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It takes one finger, like five minutes for one sentence. Yes. <laughs> oh, Celine, Celine, Celine wrote, Celine wrote, Celine is a faithful moderator as well. Yes, you are. All of you. Celine, we, I we, love her. We She's appreciate you. Doing... We'll be interviewing Celine first chance we get. We've had a hard time getting her scheduled to work on it. But uh, yeah, for uh, all. It takes a while. It takes a while to come out of that brainwashing, you know? You have to condition your brain again. It, it takes a while to come out of that, that lordship stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh my goodness. The Roman Catholic, oh, mm -hmm. it's just forever. Yeah. It took forever to get away from all that. You know, and and um, and, uh, I think it's Luke. Luke chapter 4, 18, maybe. Jesus came to heal the broken hearted. You know? And uh, so many of us, I think that's, I think that's for sure. I could be wrong. I'm sorry if I am. Um, but so many of us are, are walking around with holes in our hearts. And Jesus wants to fill those holes mm -hmm. with the love, you know, and he wants to, 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 to fill those holes up, and he wants to clean our minds, mm -hmm. and, and he wants us not to look back, not to look to the left, not to look to the right, but look to the, look to the cross, look forward, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh... I see it so often um, that the people get um, uh, either either they get taught wrong off the bat, and, and, uh, or they they get led astray by false teachers and go into apostasy. But when they do that, they they can't have this joy and peace and rest of of the blessed assurance, and they can't. And that is to me is the saddest thing. And I, I, I we, we, hit, we know a lot of people that are still struggling with that. I don't know how I was able to uh, avoid it. I never ever, from the beginning of my faith, all my whole life, I've never, uh, I've never, I had any lordship belief system at all. I, but I'll, many people I know, they had to go through that. And, and it, what a horrible thing. But thankfully, many people recognize the error of it and, and finally learned and accepted the truth that it, it's, a, it's a free gift and it's guaranteed. It took a long time. It took a long time to get out of it. It took a long time to get, to, to get rid of that brainwashing. I mean, I almost became a, I almost became a Holly Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I remember. I think I met you once at an airport. <laughs> yes, that was me. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, all right. Well, I think that uh, I think we've uh, we've covered uh, the your forty nine years to to the present day. And, and uh, is there is there anything else? Uh, that you want to tell me or, or the congregation before we say goodnight to everybody? I guess I want to bless everybody. And I love each and every one of you. And I think it's 
a wonderful thing that everybody can get together and pray for each other and lift people up when they're going through hard times. And I think the panel, we have a great panel of, of, of family. Jay's uh, Crips, uh, Jen, I mean, Stacy, we've got, we've got some incredible people on the panel. Daniel, the bias, I mean, it's just a beautiful family we have. Mm -hmm. So, if anybody's ever struggling, put it out in the chat. That's mm -hmm. what we're here for. Mm -hmm. okay. Make the phone call. Amen. Brother Luke, I thank you. I love I love this conversation tonight. All right. Well, Sister Anna, I'm very happy that we could uh, talk tonight and. Uh, these conversations are, we call them interviews, but they, um, they've been a blessing to me to get to know uh, the saints yes. uh, better. And yes. I'm glad that, you know, they're recorded. You know, we could have had this conversation privately and it would have been wonderful, but this way everybody well, else gets, yeah, but this way the whole congregation uh, will have the benefit of, of knowing you better. And uh, as we work our way through the whole congregation, and if we all know each other better, then we'll be able to understand each other better. Um, so uh, yeah. I, I guess the last thing I'd like everybody to, to know is, well, um, I don't have anything anyone scheduled for next Friday, but I better not schedule it because I have a, Kind of a late doctor's. I got to get get uh, another doctor's appointment, and I might not be back and finish with it in time to do it next week. So I'm going to hold off on that. But <clears throat> um, I guess the most hold off too long. <laughs> the most <laughs> the most pressing thing to make everybody aware of now, if you don't already know it, Sister Renee is in the hospital. She had surgery. Yeah, I. I, I how does her surgery go? Well, it, um, I, she made a couple of short videos this morning about it to catch us up. And I think she's going to be doing really well uh, with re recovering, but it, it's something that came on suddenly and it was growing like, uh, like a, a demon. It was horrible. It was, and I, I believe that they fixed it. And, but we need to keep on praying her not only to get this infection problem uh, cured, but uh, all the other things that she suffers from with her with her health issues. So everybody, just please, just keep Sister Renee in your prayers. And, uh, yeah, I have her. I have her on uh, prayer line. Mm -hmm. I definitely have these shoes. Uh, her and Jensen did for so much, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. much. Yeah. Okay, so I I, well, I I have a playlist titled "Interviews." And uh, this uh, this uh, interview will be uploaded and then added onto the playlist. So to the whole congregation, uh, go to, go to that playlist interviews and and uh, you can watch all of the interviews that we've we probably have about fifteen interviews up on it so far. Okay, and it's my goal if you're uh, in the chat room now, uh, if you're a regular participant in our congregation, it's my goal to eventually want to interview you too. So let me know. Uh, uh, Yes. I also want to give a shout out to Stephen too because he sure does know his grace gospel. God yeah. bless him. Yes, he is. He is. Uh, he's grounded in that. In that. In that. That gospel of grace. So are you all? Yeah. He's in the beach. Yeah. <laughs> and he looks like he's in a space, a space capsule when he's in his truck. <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, I, I think he, I think he's going to be uh, back uh, on uh, his program again, starting about tomorrow. He had to miss last week, so I, I expect he'll have his program running next tomorrow, which is Saturday. <clears throat> okay, well, sister, thank you uh, to the whole congregation. Uh, good night, and bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus. Amen.